Today in America, a radical mob is tearing down monuments and demanding military bases be renamed. Joining us live from New York is Uluosha, who is a lawyer. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, thank you so much for having me. What do you make of the phrase cancel culture used by your president in relation to the pulling down of statues across America? Um, well, um, the term cancel culture uh, basically has to do with uh, um, a reaction to, to sort of uh, silence, um, take away the platform of uh, popular figures. So, um, so these are actually two uh, different phenomena, but they're now coming together. Um, with regard to uh, the way cancel culture, the term came about, it actually started with the Me Too uh, movement and it was popularized um, on Black Twitter. And so you heard recently actually uh, uh, Donald Trump's daughter, she got canceled. Um, her commencement speech was canceled at a, 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 state, a, a state university in Kansas. And so Donald Trump himself, um, you know, he's been criticized that he's used that term, cancel culture, criticized it as well, because he's not a popular president. And so it's a backlash um, of, it's, it's anti-racism going on. And so, um, and in terms of the monuments that have been pulled down, you know, there are legacies to a racist past. And so uh, during Jim Crow uh, era, these Confederate statues that have been pulled down, you know, most of them were erected uh, during the Jim Crow era, era from uh, between 19, 1877 and 1964. And so uh, they sort of are symbols of hate and sort of um, they, they've been used to oppress and create intimidation amongst the minorities. All right. What, what value uh, um, do you African think Americans. maybe? And so, um, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, um, but moving on, what, what value um, will pulling down the statues achieve in your thinking? Well, you know, right now the United States is in an unusual situation. It's not common. Typically, um, even Donald Trump himself, for instance, he said that, look, if you're going to remove these um, these statues, if you say they're symbols of hate, for instance, um, due to a legacy of um, intimidation, that there's a process. You can go through Congress, you can go through the state. Um, some more progressive um, legislatures have actually moved and some progressive, progressive um, exec, uh, executive um, governors or mayors, they've moved to actually remove some of these statues themselves. But this is an unusual moment. The catalyst was the killing of George Floyd. And, you know, the, there's now been a, a groundswell and, you know, they've been gaining momentum. It's now global. And so the Black Lives Matter and everyone protesting, they're now using, you know, they're using, they say strike while the iron is hot, right? So this is the moment. And they're using the opportunity to pull down these statues themselves. Because sometimes many of where many of these statues are located, many of them, um, they're reactionary, they have reactionary um, legislatures or uh, rea reactionary conservative 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 uh, politicians who may not be in support of removing them, and so okay. many of them are just taking the initiative and doing it themselves in the in the moment. All right. um, um, what what redemptive aspects of the Black Lives Matter protests stand out for you? Uh, what gains do you see being made when this period of protests begins to settle? Well. Um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, when it started a few years ago, actually one of the founders is actually a Nigerian Ameri American, um, Upal Tumedi. Uh, she's, you know, uh, she's a girl of Nigerian immigrants. Uh, they seem to be a fringe movement. And, you know, there was sort of the move to sort of label them as just a fringe terrorist, or whatever. But now they're mainstream and they've been able to achieve. Um, they've made a lot of legislative gains, and you see Black Lives Matter, the, the, the name, the symbol is sort of iconic now. Uh, mainstream people are now in support. In fact, there's been a recent poll, and they say uh, as, much, as many as 70% Americans are now in support uh, in some form of black, you know, black Lives Matter and what their goals are, and it's anti-racism, basically. Um, there's a history of racial injustice. Uh, Americans were typically very quiet. Um, you know, there's a 
proverbial reticence with regard to race. We don't like to talk about race, even though we know racism is there. It's something that African Americans have, have been uh, uh, experiencing, suffering for a long I time. Do, I do apologize for interjecting again, but I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us um, as of now. Thank you very much, Mr. Oshaw, for your time. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure.